Hey guys, Hackexploit here, back again with another video and in this video, we're going to be looking at how to use the route exploit framework to find exploits and for vulnerability assessment of uh, embedded devices like routers and uh, cameras like um, like CCTV cameras and so on and so forth. Essentially the entire spectrum of embedded devices but uh, on a limited basis as of right now. That being said, before we get started with the video guys, I just wanted to make a public announcement that uh, the channel is undergoing a few changes in regards to the content. Now as you might have noticed and as many of you have pointed out, uh, I've been only covering the basics and rightfully so. Uh, when I started making videos actively on the channel, I wanted uh, a place for the beginner to come into and get started and move up uh, the ladder until they're very comfortable with working with Kali Linux or any other penetration testing distribution and understanding the basics of networking uh, using the different uh, and essential tools and then making their way uh, onto an, an, an advanced level, being able to choose a path in the cybersecurity field. Now, I have pretty much covered almost every basic aspect and also intermediate aspect of uh, ethical hacking uh, in regards to the CEH certification. So any content that you'll find in my channel is 100% relevant to what you'll find in the uh, CEH, um, you know, uh, essentially the, the the training and of course the certification. So I've made sure that I've covered everything from Metasploit to uh, Wireshark to Nmap uh, and also I've covered a few advanced things with Python which is not covered anywhere else. That being said, I'm working on, I'm really working hard on a new series where we're going to be completing the web app penetration testing series. We're then going to continue the Python for ethical hacking series. Now moving on to an advanced section, we will be looking at automation and creating your own scripts and then own scripts. And then finally, we'll be looking at exploit development and reverse engineering. Now, those are just some of the advanced topics. Again, as I said, we'll be working on a lot more and I'm looking on creating even more content now, hopefully on a daily basis. I'm really trying hard to get my consistency up. Uh, but anyway, guys, I know I've delved a, a bit too far, uh, you know, given the fact that this video is about another topic. That being said, let's get started with route exploit. So as you can see, I'm running Parrot OS. And as I said, I'm going to be running Linux now. Uh, that's not to say that Windows is by any means a bad operating system and uh, yeah, um, I guess you already heard the news that Microsoft is acquiring GitHub. Um, yeah, I'm just going to close that up. Uh, that's not a very, very good thing for me right now. Um, so uh, let me know what you guys think of that. That being said, let's get started with route exploit. So a lot of you guys requested me to show you uh, or to demonstrate the usage of route exploit and its ability to find uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, when I say that, I mean vulnerability assessment and also to aid the exploitation of routers, given the fact that routers are a very, very weak link in networks, especially when not configured securely, because many people will just pop up a router on their network and not change the default uh, credentials, whether it's the SSH port or the, um, or the FTP port or the Telnet port, if that's, uh, if that's what your router supports. Uh, given that many people have tried over the years to find ways of exploiting or standardizing the exploitation of routers, but I think now we have a solution that is quite early on in its development, but offers a fantastic option for anyone who is, you know, willing to try out uh, penetration testing focused on embedded devices like, uh, like routers and obviously CCTV cameras, which are also very, very useful. So uh, this is the GitHub repository, and um, as you can see, it's going to give you um, it's going to give you a bit of information about what it does. It's an exploitation framework for embedded devices, and uh, as you can see, it um, it consists of various modules that aids penetration testing. Now, let me explain a little bit of what's going on here. Now, the way it's been developed is it's developed to work as a framework for penetration testing, or more specifically, as they say, exploitation which means uh, that you can use it, uh, you can use it very, very similarly to how Metasploit is designed. So you have exploits, you have credentials, which are modules that are designed to test credentials against network services, and you have scanners, which is where I talk about uh, vulnerability assessment, so modules that check if a target is vulnerable to any exploit, you then have payloads and you have the generic modules. Now, I'm not going to be covering everything and the installation process is really very, very simple. So uh, by default, when you clone the repository, as I have on my desktop right here, it's route exploit. 
uh, w- what you need to do is you need to install the requirements. Now, the requirements are simply Python plugins or add-ons that can be installed really, really very simply. And the way you do it uh, is, as you can see, it has this installation prompt here that will tell you to install uh, the uh, Python package manager, uh, the Python 3 package manager, uh, and then to clone the repository. And then finally install the requirements using the, uh, the install r and the requirements.txt file here that contains the standardized requirements. And then you can launch it with Python 3 and the, uh, the Python executable. As you can see, I've done it right here. So, uh, welcome to router split. And of course, the first question you might be asking is, or you might be saying is, um, it looks very, very similar to Metasploit, and that is true. As you can see, instead of MSF, we now have RSF, which is pretty cool uh, in the fact that they could standardize it to, you know, a, a similar type of syntax that we have become accustomed to. That being said, uh, the search command does work. Now, a lot of people have been actually telling me that you can use uh, an autopawn, which essentially searches for vulnerabilities but uh, the, the, the reason I don't use that is, for example, if I search for the auto, uh, the auto pawn and I search, uh, there we are, we have the scanners, auto pawn. Essentially, this is used for vulnerability analysis and will test your device or your target IP address against uh, all known vulnerabilities. And if it is vulnerable, it will tell you that. So if I was to just say use scanners uh, and auto pawn, uh, and I just hit enter. You can see that the, the syntax is quite similar, but now you have to show the options. So show options and again, very, very similar to Metasploit. You can, you can set your target and the target is going to be uh, your target's IP address really simply. Uh, in most cases for your router, it could be the default gateway. As you already know, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. If you're targeting CCTV cameras, you can select the entire subnet or the range of IP addresses. As you can see, you can target IPv4 and or IPv6 addresses. All right. So essentially what it's going to do now is when it comes to down to the module options, uh, you can go ahead and set them to whatever you want as to whether, uh, you know, the, the FTP port is configured on port 21. It could be misconfigured, uh, whether you're using SSL on FTP, the SSH port, the Telnet port, and the amount of threads. For me, I'm just going to keep that really, really simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the threads first, uh, set the threads to something like 20 because I want to really increase the speed here. And I'm going to set the target to my default gateway, which is my router. Now I'm not expecting that my router is vulnerable to any exploits because it is quite a new router. So it's a TP link router. I'm not sure about the model, but I'll let you guys know, uh, set target. And I know the default gateway because I'm on my local network is a uh, 192.168.1.1. Now, uh, how do we go about running this? We just type in run and I'm going to hit end and it's going to start a vulnerability check. As you can see, it's going to go through all uh, the exploits available. And if it shows up as red right here, it means that it's not vulnerable to that exploit. Now, of course, most of them are not going to be vulnerable to uh, mo most of these modules are not going to be, um, uh, you know, they're not going to be related to my device because as you can see, they are targeting different devices. So you have Netgear, D-Link, all the other ones. Now, if your device is any one of these, it could be D-Link, it could be Netgear, then your, uh, the vulnerabilities existent for your device might show up as vulnerable. In that case, you can go uh, about testing it and also performing penetration testing on it. That being said, I just want to throw out a bit of caution that in no way am I promoting you to, uh, you know, in, in no way am I promoting anyone to go and exploit uh, routers that do not belong to you or uh, exploit routers on networks that are not, uh, that you're not allowed to perform it on. So remember, if you're performing a penetration test on a router that's not yours, make sure you have written permission. Now, as you can see, you have uh, credentials and then the module type, which is based on the device you're trying to attack, which is routers. And then you also have cameras, uh, which are targeted towards uh, mostly CCTV cameras from my knowledge. And as you can see, you have, uh, this is uh, the module type in, when it comes down to credentials is there for the, the purpose of finding default uh, and obviously brute forcing credentials, which is something 
that I cannot uh, I cannot fully demonstrate because as I said this is a more hardware based attack uh, more than anything and I'm using a TP link which as I said is not very vulnerable because it's not a very popular device uh yeah, that being said I'm not sh- I'm, I'm not saying that the device is bad but uh by by all means it might be a very easy router to exploit uh, but that's besides the point. You can see that most of the uh, the exploits or the vulnerabilities are existent for D-Link routers, all right. And you can see that they are quite extensive in terms of the exploit, uh, the in terms of the vulnerabilities. You have the password disclosures, uh, the password disclosure vulnerabilities. What else? The default credential vulnerabilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, as you can see, uh, my router had no vulnerability existent, so could not verify exploitability. And uh, the, the ones that it, it currently has shown me that I can use are based on things that, you know, do not make any sense because I do not have any Netgear. My device is not Netgear. That being said, uh, let me just show you one of the other options. Now, uh, what I had here was if I go back and uh, now I was to search for, let's see, TP-Link, right? So rem- remember, you can be performing this test on your network and let's say you have a TP-Link on your network. Just as an example, I can hit enter. And as you can see, there are exploits for the routers and there are also credential modules here that can print out the default SSH uh, credentials and the FTP credentials. All right, and there are also router-based exploits here. As you can see, we have the TP-Link WDR740ND, which is a router that I had not too long ago. And you you have the WDR740ND backdoor, so you can see that uh, these exploits are really, really powerful, especially when it comes to TP-Link, as I said, well, depending on how popular the device is, more the more exploits are gonna be developed for it. But what if I was to run a simple credential uh, module on my router, for example, uh, the FTP default credentials. Uh, I'm not sure if my FTP port is open. Uh, let me try SSH because I know that it exists, but I have set up a system where I can only log in via SSH through a certain IP on my local area network and it's not from this computer, which means that it's not gonna give me a shell uh, if I wanted to. Uh, so that's another good thing that I've done and I, I recommend that you do so on your network is to assign a specific access or administrator access to a certain IP that belongs to your computer. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna say use. And I'm gonna copy this uh, right here, and I'm go- gonna copy that, and I'm just gonna paste it in, and there you are, it's working perfectly. So show options, and uh, for right now, we want to enable verbosity, and uh, I'm going to set the threads to um, something like, let's see, uh, something like five, and uh, defaults, yeah, we can specify uh, the a file with default credentials to brute force against, but I'm, as I said, I've left mine on the defaults for the purpose of this video. I just want to show you that uh, that this that this does work. So uh, I'm going to set the target to 192.168.1.1, and I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit run. All right. So once I hit run, it's, it's going to start running the module on my device, and it's going to start the default credentials. As you can see, uh, it was able to find that my default credentials for my router, which is my primary router here. The service SSH was a username was admin and the password was admin. Now, as I said, I have a security feature on my router that restricts um, SSH access through a specific device, and it's that this device is not assigned to this computer. That IP address isn't below does not belong to this computer. So, uh, if I just open up a new tab here and I use SSH admin at uh, 192.168.1.1, and I'm going to hit enter and I hit admin, you'll see that it does work, but will not grant me a shell. As you can see, shell request failed. Uh, and that's because I have uh, set that security feature. For, so for those of you asking me uh, what to do in terms of mitigation, that's a possible option. If your router does support it, then you can uh, allow specific access. That being said, this is a very extensive tool and I just wanted to go about how to use it and the primary functionality of it. Again, it's it's based really, really heavily on hardware-based attacks, which means that it's dependent on the type of hardware that you might be running on your network or the, the type of hardware that might be running on the network that you're performing the test on. But that being said, you can really see the power of uh, such a framework and, you know, kudos to the developers. I think we, it was, it was a long time coming that we had one that targeted embedded devices 
like routers and uh, obviously CCTV cameras, things that are not very powerful. Um, uh, but that being said, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks and you can post your questions uh, on my website as well. That being said, guys, that's going to be it for this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.